So STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And the way we uh, manifest that in our school's focus is that every class, including the ones that teach STEM, uh, have a STEM focus that happens once a week. So we have a STEM activity, STEM club, which is what we did today. I introduced STEM club as a way to have a fun, hands-on experience for all of our students, kindergarten through 12th grade, a time where they could just enjoy STEM and begin to think critically. So STEM Club is, we have our teacher present a lesson to the students. For example, there's a lesson going to, where the students have to learn about um, Mentos dropping inside of a Coca-Cola bottle. They have to learn about uh, the gases being released from the porous substance and then actually causing the explosion of Coca-Cola. That will be a good example of a STEM lesson that, that we're doing. That it's really exciting for the kids. They love seeing it. So. This class is South Carolina history, and for STEM today, we uh, took five pieces of paper, um, made four of them into columns and one of them as a base, and competed to see how many books we could stack on top. I think it's both about um, proportions, um, balance, things like that. You kind of have to get everything precise. I also like science a little bit more. I like um, figuring out how things work. And I think math and science contribute a lot to that. This right here, we built popsicle towers. We were talking about 9-11 and September 11th, and we were talking about the rebuilding process and about how we had to rebuild after such a tragedy. And so their task was what they would do to rebuild. So as we were discussing all this, they used popsicle sticks to create their own version of what they think the rebuilding of the tower should have looked like. But it also got them to engineer an actual building that actually stood. Because I told them it had to withstand us moving it to be able to do that. And then that leads over into our STEM projects, which we have every quarter, where they actually have to apply those critical thinking skills. We uh, have a long-term STEM plan uh, that the kids work on. So like this year they did like a science fair as their final result. So it was a long-term STEM project where as a homeroom, they planned something, they identified a problem that they wanted to work on. They worked on the problem. So like my favorite one this year was the eighth graders. They, they created a, a way to enhance the local park. So they, they wanted to take one of the local parks and make it become more like ADA compliant for disability. We have a robotics club and a competition team that are working with um, AI technology. We have our Amazon Future Engineers class that is teaching more applications as far as math and coding and uh, technology are concerned. And eventually, when Amazon gets drones going, they could be the ones who program the drones. You know, we also have our CTE program that we introduced this year, and that's information technology, health sciences, and then business and marketing. We'll be having some finishers within the next couple of years that will be taking the exams for like a certified nursing assistant or an IT person, um, just based on whatever route they choose. If they really find that they love science and they might want to go be a science teacher, or they might want to be an astronaut, or they might want to go be a, a doctor. And then engineering, well, engineering is engineering. Maybe they want to go and erect bridges or buildings. The, the technology and engineering part of it can apply to anything not just the academic side. So we have some kids that are like wanting to learn automotive mechanics and go into that career path eventually. And then we have some kids that are going into like agricultural science. We have one student that's going to the governor's school for ag next year. They'll be able to land a job that is probably more lucrative for them because they have this background. Every student doesn't learn the same way. And I know with our charter school, we get a little bit more leeway on how we teach things and we can make sure, our classes are smaller, so we can make sure the students are getting what they need from them. School choice gives the parents a choice of what they want. And when the parents get to choose, that means that they're more involved in what the kids do as well. So then it's not only the teachers involved in the students, it's also the parents involved in the students as well. So it's like we're both invested in getting the students exactly what they need.